socials real quick. There's our, there's our logo. All right, so I want to start with a message that I sent to Aaron 153 weeks ago, according to Instagram. Uh, hi, Aaron. I'm working on organizing an Atlanta-themed Instagram show at Youngblood Gallery in December. Uh, I'd, I'd like it to be a cross-cultural look at the city and the folks that live here. Would you be interested in being one of the curators? That's how it started, all right? So uh, originally it was an idea, I wanted to have a uh, Atlanta-themed uh, art show using Instagram as a submission mechanism. Um, I knew that this was something that I could not do by myself. Um, I needed to have, uh, I wanted it to be a well-rounded aesthetic. I wanted to be a make to make sure that um, we were getting a good look at the city and um, so I knew that I needed to get some collaborators, right? Um, so I reached out to people that I did not know on Instagram, and uh, that's how it all started. Uh, we got together at Manuel's Tavern, and we came up with the hashtag, we love ATL. Uh, we like that tag because it's a proclamation rather than just like hashtag Atlanta. Um, we took submissions in October 2012. We weren't sure how many we were going to get. We thought maybe 500 people would submit photos. Uh, we ended up getting 5,000 photos. We had a show that December. Um, we had 275 photos by 170 different artists. And in that month, we raised uh, $3,271, which makes 13,000 meals for the Atlanta Community Food Bank. It gets better. Cue the applause light. <laughs> um, so uh, after doing that, we decided, you know, all right, it was a lot of work, it took a lot of time and energy to do that. Uh, we took a break, we spent about three months uh, doing laundry, you know, fixing the sink, uh, all the stuff that we neglected to do while we were working on the show. And during that time, uh, the hashtag jumped from 5,000 photos to 12,000 photos. Um, this whole time, we weren't, we weren't featuring anybody on the Instagram, on our, on, excuse me, on our feed. Uh, we basically just let it go and people kept using the tag. So clearly, we had tapped into something where we gave sort of people the opportunity to express why they loved Atlanta. Uh, for me, I didn't even love Atlanta that much at the time, right? <laughs> I mean, honestly. Uh, but, um, you know, after seeing all, these, uh, seeing all these photos from all these places around the city, I realized that I hadn't been to a lot of these spots. I didn't, there was all the stuff going on that I didn't know about. Um, and it made me grow to love the city, you know, even more. Well, more than not that much. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so after that, we got together and we're like, all right, what are we going to do? This thing has a life of its own. What's our next step? So we brainstormed and we came up with the idea of a food truck for photography. Uh, our motto was, let's take the photos from the streets to the streets. Um, we started a kick, uh, Kickstarter campaign to buy this awesome truck that you see here and also outside. Uh, we had 79 backers and we raised over $7,500. Um, so that was two 2013 was the year of the truck. Uh, that year, We Love ATL raised $4,379. And for those two years combined, that makes over 30,000 meals for the food bank. Uh, 2014, uh, we started getting into more uh, public art projects. Uh, what you have here is our first Art in the Beltline project. Uh, it's a 45 by 45 project, and the idea was that the Beltline connects 45 cities. Uh, we picked 45 photographers from the Wheel of ATL community. Oh, sorry, cities, yeah. <laughs> All the cities on the Beltline. Sorry, neighborhoods. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, 45 neighborhoods, right? The Beltline connects 45 neighborhoods. So we picked 45 photographers and assigned each one of them a neighborhood, and their job was to go to that neighborhood and photograph someone who sort of represented that area, 
was a stalwart, an activist, or someone who has represented that neighborhood. Uh, this was uh, a collaboration with Inside Out Project, uh, which is a global or a global mural project. This is a wheat paste. Uh, this doesn't look that big, but it's actually about 60 feet long and about 15 feet high. So, um, next. Uh, 2014, we had a uh, Ponce City Market Wheel of ATL Gallery. Uh, that was our closing show. That was October. That was also in conjunction with Atlanta Celebrates Photography. Um, that, the, the interesting thing about that show is that it grew each week. So we would add stuff. So people would come in and they would see photos and they'd go, oh, hey, I want to get my photo up. And then they would go and they would take photos and they would tag it. And then they would come back the next week and it would be up. And it just it grew and grew and grew. So very interesting. Uh, that year we raised $3,500 and that makes for a three year total of 44,000 meals. So we're feeding a lot of folks. And by we, I mean everybody, you guys. Uh, we also had an exhibition at uh, Marta, five, five Points Marta Station. Uh, this was a great thing. MailChimp actually uh, bought all the ad space uh, in the entire Marta Station, stripped away all the advertising and gave us that space. Yeah. Super duper big round of applause for that one. Um, so that display was, I think, over 850 photos. It was a lot of photos. Uh, and it was really interesting to go in and watch people interact and, and sort of see what people did whenever advertising was stripped away. So it was great. Next. Well, the time really goes by quickly, doesn't it? Uh, CNN Center, we have a display up. Uh, it's actually, this is a current, uh, current display that's up right now. This is in partnership with Turner. And essentially what we have is, we, if, on, if you hashtag your photo with Wheel of ATL, and the Wheel of ATL Instagram feed likes that photo twice a day, it gets uh, sent to this kiosk at CNN Center. It's a great opportunity for the city of Atlanta because CNN Center gets so many visitors from out of town. It's a great way of showing people that come here how much we love the city. So thank you, Turner. I keep pointing it the wrong way, sorry. All right, so here's where we're at today. Um, we have over 19,000 followers on Instagram. There's over 250,000 photos uh, on the We Love ATL hashtag. That grew like from Blake's introduction to now. Yeah, exactly. We're probably yeah, about 300,000 yeah. right now since <laughs> you've mentioned it. Just, it. just went up to Just for talking. Three yeah, I think our bio is a little dated. Going up Sorry. right now. Uh, we're working towards becoming a nonprofit. We have another Art on the Beltline exhibit coming up. We'll have a gallery show at Paris on Ponce uh, this October. Um, we have an awesome board and staff. Um, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Next. So, yeah. So in, you know, three and a half years or so, we've learned a lot from our community. We've learned a lot about not really knowing how to run an arts organization at all, um, and then just sort of blindly figuring that out. Um, and learned a lot from our staff, um, and, and again, from the community. Um, it's been kind of a grand experiment, um, and from that, we kind of, in preparation for this talk, kind of thought about like six insights from the digital frontier. Um, and, uh, and so we're gonna go through those. So uh, first um, is that online is really good for connecting people, um, but action happens offline. Um, and that's something that I think, you know, people, don't really realize, like when we, when we talk about, like, everyone's always like, how did you guys meet? And so on and so forth. We're like, we met through We Love ATL, which we created to help other people meet. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, we really, you know, we met, uh, we connected online, but we, but we sort of came together offline to make something happen. Um, we've strived to do that, I think, uh, at every stage. So we have a community of people who connect online. We feature photos from them, but we once a month get people together for Insta meets um, so that people can meet um, face to face. Uh, and what happens at those Insta meets and gatherings like this is that people 
you know, they, they start to communicate with one another and they start to collaborate, right? And so you've, you know, we have a broad collaboration going where people are sort of coming and collaborating with We Love ATL, but then at a meetup, you know, you'll get two or three people starting that are like, you know what, I really love shooting the streets and like, you know, so let's start this thing called Street Shooters ATL. And, and then they start to do their own thing. Um, and I think a lot of times when you're talking about online communities, people tend to be afraid of like people doing their own thing. You're like, you know, you should be doing my thing. Like, you know, you came to my thing, you should be doing my thing. I think what we've learned is the more you let people connect and let people collaborate uh, on their own, the, the, the better you get um, as, a, as a community. Oh, it's me, again. Stay true to your community. Um, yeah, that's a big one. You know, I think that for us, as, a, as a, a, a burgeoning arts organization, we look at our community and we say to ourselves, the community's goals are our goals. Um, we're very careful to choose who we collaborate with in terms of greater entities, because we want to make sure that their goals are, our are the same goals that our community shares. Going back to MailChimp, you know, they, they feel like you were oversaturated by advertisement. So they like the idea of just going in and completely stripping out, you know, all the advertisements out of High Point's Marta Station and donating that to us. When they came to us, we were like, okay, that's awesome. So where are we going to put MailChimp? And they're like, we don't want you to put MailChimp anywhere. We're like, well, but why not? And like, because we just, we don't want to be, we don't want to be identified with it. We want to just do it. We don't want to make it an advertisement. The whole point is that we're stripping away advertising. That's, a perfect, that's the perfect kind of collaboration for us because their goals are the same as our goals, the same as our community's goals. So um, yeah, stay true to the community, pay attention to what they say, um, for sure. Next. Hey y'all, so um, one of the things that we- I was uh, so hoping you'd have like a Kermit voice. <clears throat> no, no, Finally. it's a kind of a deeper, like soothing, I would say. Um, <laughs> One of the things we learned a lot about is, well, I'm gonna, we're going to talk a lot about Instameets. You'll hear us bring it up quite a few times. But Instameets are really where, I guess, the magic happens, really. That's the heartbeat of, of We Love ATL, we think. That's because it's taken that kind of online community, like, like Brandon said, and, and, and giving you guys a chance to connect with each other. And, and then really, like, creativity clashes, and, and, and people start to find people they love. And so what happens is you take someone who's a designer, who's extremely passionate about designer, designing stuff, and, and they love photography as well, and then you've team them up with someone who likes street photography and they happen to get along and then you start to kind of clash those worlds and kind of a new thing's born. And so what we found out is that when you're around passionate people, that's why Creative Mornings exists, is being around passionate people inspires you to be more passionate about what you're passionate about. I'm not trying to be inspired to be a better designer if you're a designer. I'm trying to take your passion and, and insert it into my photography, which is what I'm passionate about, which makes me a better photographer. So we clash the worlds of everybody and say, get together, talk about what you love, your passion, I'm gonna draw from that and it's gonna make me better at, at what I do. And I think you see that happening like b more broadly just in Atlanta. I mean, like this started four years ago. We started three and a half years ago. The Beltline started, you know, I, the, like the idea of, of creative, you know, like, Connecting people who are passionate with other people who are passionate is, I think, what's making this city a better place. Or a less crappy place. <laughs> Touche, Brandon. <laughs> um, so, so one other you know, thought on, like, when you have a community um, that is collaborating together, um, you know, I think one of the things we sort of talk about is how do you organize that community and how does it grow? And people are always like, like, why did we live ATL become a thing? I think it's because they want to like make their own hashtag for their own like ad campaign. And they're like, how do you do that? Um, so, I mean, I think that, you know, most broadly, it's just we, we are letting people be passionate about what they're passionate about. But I do think that there's also um, this other thing, um, which is that, um, and then we've sort of called it appealing to people's worst can harness their best. Um, so because we're an Instagram first community, um, you know, we have, uh, I think, um, you know, we, we sort of looked at the goals of what our organization was and, uh, and our community, which is to showcase the best of Atlanta 
uh, and to showcase the work, uh, the best work from Atlanta. What's nice about that is that also sort of um, uh, ties in nicely with people's natural instincts as human beings to want to share their work. Um, and some people, like, you can turn that slightly and that becomes vanity, right? You know, it's like, I want to be recognized for what I'm doing. Um, and so I think that uh, because we were able to take that thing, which might be a little icky or a little selfish, and tie it to something that is more community-driven and selfless, um, it allows that sort of evil to be harnessed for good. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what that has done is actually created sort of a strata of different, you know, different collaborators. So there's some people who are just sort of casually part of the community, but then it creates people who are, who become natural sort of leaders in the community, um, you know, not, not because we've given them a handout and a t-shirt and, and tried to create a leader, but just because that's just what happens when you, when you are motivating people in the way that, um, works for both your, your uh, creative community and also works for just human nature. Yes, so every individual, every, sorry, I've had a Red Bull and like two coffees. <laughs> uh, every individual success is your success, okay? Uh, so since we started this, uh, we've met a lot of awesome photographers, people that wouldn't even consider themselves to be photographers. Um, we've had at least 10 people that are in our community become sort of like suggested users, super users uh, on Instagram and have skyrocketed into Insta fame. Um, and we celebrate that. You know, we think that's great and we want to just, and we want them to enjoy that success. Um, I think it goes back to, again, whenever you collaborate with people, it pushes you to be your best. Um, and the more passionate people that you're around, the more passionate people that you surround yourself with, the harder you push yourself to be better. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, fill in. That, you got it. I mean, that's, I, I agree. You know, we, one thing you can do when you collaborate is, is you can keep things close to your heart, and I think that's the wrong way. And the other way is to celebrate the successes of the people you're collaborating with. And that's just pretty much what we're trying to say is that, is that we, we, there's like a good jealousy that makes you better and then there's a bad jealousy that, jealousy that takes away from the team mentality. So as you guys look at collaborating with people, remember, celebrate them, celebrate their successes and, and that, that pushes you and then they celebrate you and then you've got like a really great kind of team mentality. And also just give away your ideas. Like, like, I feel like there's so many people who, like, hold on to something, and they're like, I'm going to do this. Um, I was just talking with Marshall, like, while he was playing guitar and talking at the same time, because he can do that. Um, and, and, he was, and he and I, I think, are both the same sort of people who are like, it's like, oh, it's okay if someone else does this awesome idea. I'll just tell people this awesome idea, and hopefully someone will do it. Um, you don't have to necessarily be the one to do it yourself. You can celebrate other people's success. So... I think uh, I wanted to talk about this one just because I think uh, I'm a bit, I'm a businessy guy. Like I get down to business, it's like all right, let's go make some stuff happen. You know what I mean? And um, and I can I can sometimes forget about the fun that 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 needs to happen in these kind of groups and and collaborations. So Insta Meets is kind of where that happens for us. Is, and uh, we've got um, y'all know Tim Lampy over yonder. Tim's got an incredible brain, works for, for MailChimp, incredible designer, and he's come up with a real, couple really fun, creative ideas for Insta Meets. He did, we did one where everyone brought wigs, and we took photos of people in wigs, called it Wigs to Meet. We did one with, uh, <laughs> Tim's got an amazing series on ice cream sandwiches. We did ice cream sandwich meat. He, you know, so he brings a lot of like, really great ideas, which kind of ties back into listen to your community. Don't forget about that. But um, we, we want those Insta Meets not just to be about going and making cool things and making pretty pictures, but we also want people to come and enjoy it, and we want them to leave and say, that was unbelievable. I met a ton of awesome people. It was a blast. You guys should come. And I think that's why we've had Insta Meets that have brought over 200 people out. And we've had, you know, any, anywhere from 50 to 200. The last ones have been really awesome and huge. And so we want to collaborate just with people. We want them to have fun in our organization. We don't want it just to be about Insta fame. Although if that happens, that's super awesome. And we celebrate that. But um, we want people to come out to those things. We want them to clash with people they've never met before and uh, have an awesome time and then leave and just say, 
We love ATL is awesome, but also the people in Atlanta are awesome. And that's, that's why we're a part of this is because Atlanta has an incredible creative community, as you can see, just by looking around. And so like, we're, we're super stoked. And so just, just kind of in, in closing, we want to say, I mean, thank you guys for, for coming out here. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous that um, Tim and Brandon and I were just talking a little bit ago. Like we started this in 2012 with a little comment from Tim that said, hey, like, Let's do a show, and all of a sudden we've got this thing where there's, you know, almost 20,000 people that are following us on Instagram, and we've had, you know, I can't tell how many Insta meets, but we've had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people come out to these Insta meets, different Insta meets, and 250,000. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of people. Millions. We. Million. It's I more millions. Next, I think our next one will hit the the trillion mark, but don't don't quote me on that. But. But just lots of people that have come together to clash, and 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 we just want to say like thank you because like this doesn't exist without without this like we are a product of you like we're a product of the community that has really made us and we've kept our ear open and we will continue to do that because this is less about uh, we love ATL and it's about we, we love, love ATL, ATL. <laughs> you know and it's kind of I just thought that up just now <laughs> so so thank you and um, we would love to We'd love to take any questions that you guys have. Thanks for sitting through that um, presentation. I think we also want to, just before we do that, um, want to thank uh, all of our volunteers. Um, so we are uh, um, just now starting um, as a nonprofit. Um, we have a volunteer staff of amazing people, um, uh, Emily Schreck, um, Jason Parker, Trip Cook, uh, Rob... Fukau as Instagram name. Yes. We don't know how to say his last name. <laughs> Rob <laughs> It was Witz. <laughs> it's a good thing he's not here. I know. <laughs> I hope he doesn't watch the talk. <laughs> um, who am I missing? Jason. I said Jason. Yeah. And then and then the three of us. And then we have an amazing board um, that has um, that has sort of bared with us as we've tried to start the process off right and, uh, and not rush things and make sure that we're always, as we're moving towards you know, doing bigger, better things as a nonprofit, that we're doing that in a way that's always going to be about the community and, um, and about making the community stronger and better. So, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. That was awesome. So I'm going to kick off the q and I have a question. Um, so you mentioned you, were, you guys just kind of got together and were thinking about the right hashtag to call all of this. I'd like to know some of the other ones that didn't make it. <laughs> and then for Q&A, uh, they'll just call on someone, and I'll run you the mic so that your question's on the video. So just stand up. I'll run you the mic as fast as I can. Well, there's the obvious ones, like we're pretty into ATL. We'd like to like it a little more. Will you help us? It was a it was little really long. long. It was just it was long. Really long. That's all. I honestly can't even remember, dude. I like, mean, there were a lot of beers at Manuals that night, yeah. so I think there was a napkin, and I think there was two or three names, but um, I was, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you mentioned Keith Weaver was a part of our original group um, when we when we started, and he was with us for a while. And we want to say he, he's very much a part of the heart of this, as as as, as us three are, and so. Thank you to Keith Weather. We want to not, for, not forget him. But he was also help, a, a part of helping kind of create that hashtag. And I, I think he, he thought it up, and I think we were all just like, that's the one. It was very immediate. It, we almost didn't need to think about it. The, the reason I think that, you know, I mean, it was short. It was very, like, I think we w thought about doing We Love Atlanta, too. But it, we wanted to keep it really, really short. Um, and It was available. And it was available. There was like two posts or one post or no post, something like that. Because we, we were literally thinking of it not as a rallying cry at that point. We were thinking of it as a curation mechanism. Like we wanted something that we could look and, go and be sure that these photos had been submitted for this particular thing. It wasn't until afterwards that we realized that when people posted it, they were kind of saying, I love ATL. You know, when, when, they, when they put it on there. And I think that that's sort of what made it special. Feel free to call on different beard lengths to answer the question if you'd like to. <laughs> okay, this is for beard number two. <laughs> uh, I just, first I just want to say, I didn't realize there was a cause behind what you're doing, and I think that deserves a huge round of applause, so that's great, well done. 
Secondly, most obvious question is how on earth do you curate all of those entries? <laughs> uh, well, we spend a lot of time on our phones. <laughs> Uh, well, we have, it started with just the three of us, uh, and now we've expanded. We have our volunteers. They also help curate. Uh, it's good because we want to have a well-rounded perspective. Um, we want to, we like different aesthetics, different styles, and uh, yeah, it just, it takes a lot of time. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I, I would say that for us, as the fee gets more popular, we've just had to keep adding, you know, adding people's eyes on it. Uh, originally, it was just like, oh, the three of us are going to check every photo. And now I think it's like w the three of us just have, as a part of our daily routine, plus everyone else, as a part of their daily routine, they go through the, you know, the last, you know, 400 posts. You know, you just kind of, you kind of go through it. And, you know, over the course of time, this is something that I think was an unintended consequence of how uh, popular the hashtag has become, is that the, the hashtag itself started to, at one point we, we were like, wow, there's lots of pictures of people like, you know, going like this, um, and... Cognac ads. Yeah, a lot of cognac ads. <laughs> um, and, and, which, I mean, you know, uh, so I think what we were, we were worried for a while. We were like, oh no, our feed is falling apart until we realized that, the, the, and that's why we started posting more regularly on our Instagram feed to feature people so that it, there was a, there's a, there's like a really raw We Love ATL that you can be a part of if you want to just stroll the, ha you know, scroll the hashtag, or you can just wait for the, the the curated you know the curated feed, and I think what we the unintended part of that was we were like oh we have to do that to curate, but then what we what we realized was once we started to reflect back great photos, the feed started getting better, you know it was like the, the or the hashtag yeah that like our feed at, when we would you know post when we, when we post more regularly the hashtag gets better. Because yeah. because people get inspired and and uh, and post great stuff. Yeah, man, go ahead. Uh, how you doing? Um, we're good. It's good. I remember running on. Brandon on the on the belt line one time. Um, my name is Bame Joiner. Uh, I, I work with the Center for Civic Innovation uh, downtown Atlanta. Um, I'm a native Atlantan, I'm 36 years old, uh, Atlanta public school graduate. And the Atlanta that I come from, uh, kind of follow, piggybacking on Max's article last week in the Creative Loafing to Rodney Carmichael's article this week to also Blake's article in the Creative Loafing, where there seems to be this tale of two different cities. And the Atlanta that I come from, their, the hip hop and music and urban, I don't really, and I went to school in Buckhead, but I'm from the West End. So <laughs> I, I don't remember there being this like heavy ATL branding from what I'll say the other side. It was when you do look at the hashtag and you do see the cognac ads or this, this very heavy, like, we are ATL, that, that was started in the 90s, this very, like, it's not just New York and LA, like, we are Atlanta. And that came from, first and foremost, heavy-wise, from Atlanta's urban base. And I've never before seen so many others wearing ATL and saying, and it's dope, like, I, I think it's pretty dope, but, the unintended part that you just mentioned, uh, when you talk about being intentional and intentional collaboration, like you, in my opinion, you can't separate We Love ATL from Atlanta Public Schools. It's, or Real Housewives or any of that. Like, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're from outside the country, people outside Real the country- Real Housewives of Dunwoody? Maybe, <laughs> but People outside the country kind of look at Atlanta brand-wise from a, another type of brand. So moving forward as far as intentional collaboration, because that's what's needed to, for the city to be more inclusive and not be these two separate cities. What plans do you have moving forward for more intentional collaboration? Which the Marta thing I think was dope. 
Like, I've had to put a lot of martyr riders and say, yo, look, you know, but moving forward, what do you, what do you have? Well, you know, one of the things we've been trying to do is be, particularly with the public art projects, to be really, really intentional about, um, you know, bringing in all of Atlanta. So we've been a, a huge supporter of taking the truck out to, uh, we, we, so when we bring the truck out to, to events, we bring out to pop to events we know are popular, but then ones we want people to go to in the West End, um, on University Ave. Um, you, you, you know, I mean, I think that for us, um, we want to be able to steer people to um, nonprofits uh, all over the city that are doing amazing things. Um, I think the, you know, the other broader thing that we're doing, is, it's part of our plan once we, once we get a little bit more funding, um, is to open up a, uh, a grant system uh, where we're giving photographers um, money and a, a prearranged gallery to show uh, work from a project that they've done. Because we have so many people who are like, I want to go into the schools and work with kids and with Instax cameras to do an amazing thing. Or I, I wanna do you know, this project um, you know, uh, of, of portraiture um, you know, in, in a historic neighborhood. Um, so for us, like, what we wanna do is to start to keep a, a broad voice uh, and be able to sort of reflect very intentional projects um, where artists are able to um, really have a passion uh, and we're able to sort of make that happen and, and, and then put eyes on it. Yeah, thank, thank you for that question. We really appreciate that question. Here's, here's a, let me break it down. Like, we don't really know what we're doing. And so, like, <laughs> so to, be, to be like really honest with you, we don't necessarily know the answer to that, but here's what I do know is that we are open and willing to collaborate with anybody who comes up with a good idea. So why don't we schedule a sit down and let's talk about how we can collaborate. <laughs> Let's do, we'll do uh, two or three more questions. I mean, way in the back. Perfect, thanks. Get on it, get on it, Blake. <laughs> I saw you eating that chicken and waffles. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Chi Christine. Um, I run a recording studio in Metro Atlanta. And so that's the question I wanted to ask was, the ITP, OTP discussion is always so heated, and it's always so, you're not real Atlanta, because I grew up in Gwinnett County, like born and raised in the city, and my parents took me out of the ITP district, and you know, I, I came back by choice when I could get out of their house. So the question is, growing up in, outside of their perimeter, you realize just how much Atlanta that is as well. So when people come from other cities and other states, they're like, where do you live? And I'm like, Tequila, where is that? It's 40 minutes from Atlanta. Oh, that's still Atlanta. So inside of Atlanta, no one considers the metro area Atlanta, but almost like, I think, I don't even know the percentage anymore, but a huge percentage of the people in Atlanta don't even live inside anymore. So they, in my opinion, are a big part of what makes Atlanta so awesome. And they love ATL just as much as those born and raided, raised around Grady. So how do you include the people who may not live in the Fulton County, DeKalb County perimeters, but they still love ATL just as much? And are there any plans to collaborate outside of the perimeter to show that, hey, this is Atlanta too? Well, we do include Metro Atlanta. We, we've always, from the beginning, said that it's, it's, you know, I mean, if there's a photo from North Georgia, that's to us, that's like, this is why I love to, this is why I love Atlanta because I can drive to the mountains, yeah. right? Um, Buford yeah, Highway. If, if the picture was like an hour and a half circle, like, you know, <laughs> we kind of like, we're, 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 we're pretty cool being like, yeah, you're, you can, you can get on the truck. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, we, we actually have done ah, Instameet, well, that, was, that, that was OTP Instameet. Um, but again, thank you, thank you. It's things that we want to hear from the community. What else can we do? How can we collaborate with outside? And so we'd love to hear ideas about that. And we are absolutely willing. In fact, I think we're going to be doing a, a, a Kennesaw Mountain one pretty soon. Keep that on the DL. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Tim. Tim Lampy, y'all. Hey. Um, 
so the great thing is uh, when I visit a lot of other cities, either in other Insta meets or other Instagram uh, people, and whenever I talk about being from Atlanta, they're always, they always I, I feel like a lot of people recognize We Love ATL. Um, I think there's other movements popped up in like Dallas and other places. Uh, have you had people reach out to you in other cities asking how did you do what you do and, and uh, have, have other people asked you for how to do it in another city? We, we do get requests often actually and I think that um, most of the requests that we've gotten are people that really just want to increase their city's brand or they want to, to highlight that. And I'm always very, very specific in saying that what we do is this is about building community, it's about serving the community and converting love for the community and recycling that love back in, you know, into the community. Uh, I think that most of the, most of the, actually, I don't think I've had a single request that wasn't like a corporate interest or, or some sort of like, you know. Well, the, the, before, before the truck in that three month laundry period, um, we did get a request from uh, Tyson Wheatley who at the time was in Hong Kong uh, and was like, I want to, I'd love to try to do this over there. And we worked with him, we kind of, and, and like kind of pulled together like a kit of like, here's how we would maybe do this. Well, we were um, supposed to. Right, well, yeah, we, I, I th we thought about pulling together a kit and it was a good kit. I mean, this kit. Oh, we thought about it. It was, ama it was amazing. We, it was we like thought it completely kit. through, yeah. Um, but I, that was actually very early on. We you know, we were like, oh, maybe we should to get to like our next big thing. You know, maybe we should try to do these shows in a lot of different cities. And I think we very intentionally decided that we didn't want to do that. We wanted to be very, you know, very specific to our community and grow this community. Um, yeah, I think unfortunately the the sad sad reality is that a lot of people that contact us see us as a way to reach an audience. It's marketing and and they're looking to make money and we 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 just kind of say, hey, we're we, really good at not making we're money. Awesome. <laughs> really good at it. You know, at the core of like what we are, once we get to the point of also make sure that you're tied to something local and give a percentage or a huge percentage of what you make back to that local community, they're like wait, that's not really what we want to do. So like a lot of the requests have been help me gain more exposure, more money, and, and that's obviously not what we do. The exposure for us has come from you guys helping kind of make that more, so. All right, let's give Tim, Brandon, and Aaron a round of applause. Thank you all.